Welcome to Ticker Talk with hosts Max and Kate, podcasting from Treetown in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ticker Talk shares the everyday success stories and science behind the heart rate based functional aerobic fitness training practiced at CrossFit Treetown. Max and Kate explore the research, science, and practical experiences behind Ticker Training, a program developed by Max for just about everyone your grandma, your cousin who runs marathons, and you. In this series, we'll explore what exactly heart rate-based functional aerobic fitness is, how what you eat affects how you move and how you feel, what tools to use in tracking progress, and how to fit training into your everyday life. Join us and learn something new to make a healthier you. Pace yourself. So is it working? It should be working. Awesome. Okay. We should open it on a phone or something. And yeah. Okay, here. Give hey, ourselves. Hey, Carly, what's up? You're the first person. Um, can you hear? Like, give us a thumbs up. All right, Pat's in too. Thank God. <laughs> All right. Let's, what? Know, let's get a couple. Thank you, Pat. Pat, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me and you can hear Min Max's world and Kate's world. Yeah, can you hear us yeah. as well? Can you, you guys can hear us okay, yes? Yeah. You hear us. We're waiting for uh, Pat's thumbs up. It's working. live right now. All right. There, we can watch ourselves. Yes. Hmm. So we're big here. <laughs> We've made it. <laughs> All right, what do you, you guys ready to kind of get going here? You want to give a minute or? No, oh, we're ready. I'm ready now. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing this, you guys. This is cool. It took us a few minutes to figure it out, but this is great. Uh, you know, a lot of times we've been talking with a fair number of, of gyms as of late that are interested in becoming powered by ticker. And, you know, there's a lot of questions and things that when you're trying to ch change the culture potentially of your gym or your overall message of what you're doing, it can be a little bit daunting and let's just use the word scary a little bit. So I thought it would be a cool thing for me to be able to ask you guys a couple things that um, I ask gym owners when they're they're getting interested in doing this. Is that cool? Absolutely. All right. So uh, one question that I always like to ask is, you know, what do you guys do really well? And for you guys, I'm going to ask before ticker, what did you guys do really well as a gym owner or as a community or just can you kind of touch on that a little bit? Yeah, go ahead, baby. Community, we had we were really close knit in the beginning. Um, Andrew and I really pride ourselves in making sure we keep a tight community, um, and that really comes through the workouts. So that's how people bond. Got it. We were bonding over, you know, kind of the pain of the workouts. Man, I'm sore, or man, this is really gonna hurt. This is gonna suck. Got it. But that's kind of what we knew, I think. Mm -hmm. And that was that was what we did. That was cool. That's how you that's how you connected and stayed in front of people yeah. and yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. And we we were what we were good at was leading by example as well. Um, we weren't saying we did one thing and did the other. Like we were we were open to about like hey, this is for health. We do some extra things. Like it was all about us doing what our gym was doing and they believed in us for that. So anything we said, hey, this is gonna work, they will do. And that trust, just like Dan said. Yeah, we- yeah. You were you're in the trenches with them. Yeah, whatever program our members are doing, we do. Yeah. We've been you know, on the other end of like, oh, you, we're doing special programming. Right. You know, we've done that as well. So it meant a lot to us to do do whatever our members are doing so that they put their full trust in us. Cool. And then, we're not special at no. all. And then what, what were some things that you guys struggled with or that as as coaches or as gym or that you didn't do as well as you'd like, that you struggled with? I'll before that. ticker. Yeah, before well, ticker. Well, this one's hard. Uh, definitely most people are gonna watch this or whatever. Um, Jen and I, or me or one of us, or chances are, the level one trainer, um, if you got your level one, and it was—it's hard to make people move well. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And if you're out, if you're out here saying like, no, well, let me come watch every single class of the day. Let me evaluate with one check mark of that. That was an injurious position. That was an like that. That was above your threshold. That was this. That was that. And we literally were like trying our hardest to make people move really well in in failing at it. In my opinion, not terribly. Like still doing our best, but yeah. right. It, right. Like there's nothing else I can do to make somebody's shoulder stop hurting when I'm I'm finally just like, oh gosh, man, like what do you have to do? I think it comes with that competitive nature of people. Uh, their friends are doing that weight and right. their friends are going that fast. So now they have to do that weight and go that fast. Even though as coaches we're recommending that maybe that's not the best option for you today, but right. We're talking to grown adults. They're going to do what they want to do. Correct. Well, nobody wants to stop the middle of their workout to be coached. You know, they're in it to win it. Right. Yeah. They're, yeah. They have to get a good time or have to get that weight. So no one's going to want to stop and be like, oh, hang on. Let me fix my right knee. Right. It that's not, that wasn't the culture. So that was a good answer. Yeah, it's it's true. It's like we, we put our pants on the same way other people do and people weren't doing that. I was not doing as good of a job coaching every single class as I could have because the um, the environment just wasn't necessarily conducive yeah. to to saying hey let's let's slow down a little bit and let's focus on that. So yeah. that, mm-hmm. um, so I, I that kind of leads into you know the next question there of um, you know what what were some of the things that happened with once you started doing ticker that you didn't expect. Is that, did I have that in there as my question? Yeah, it's the next Surprise one was, pop-up question. What has, after ticker, what has it enhanced what you were good at? So yeah, yeah. Kind of going back to that community aspect, you know, people can talk to each other before and after the whiteboard time because they are so focused on a time in their workout. Mm. Now, I think the coolest thing that I've seen in our community is people talking during the workouts during their rest time in the workouts. Like we have a four minute rest and people aren't just standing around. They're like going to hang out with each other. Right. Yep. So I think that's so cool. And I think that kind of bonds people even more so than like, hey, I'll see you on the other side of this. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, so things we were good at, the community, it's like she just added. But also, um, what what is it enhanced is that our goal was always to make people healthier, even even if we were trying to get that through competitive nature. But like just last night, we had a member. She did CrossFit at another you know gym and like, took some breaks, whatever. And she's fairly new. I mean, she just comes up. She doesn't talk that much. If she watched, her name's Nikki. Mm-hmm. Probably, she goes, "I should be the poster child for this training." She's like, "I, I you know, I struggle with being hypoglycemic, and I, I." I have always had this inhaler from training and I don't use the inhaler anymore and, and my mm. food and everything is, she's like, I just love this so much. And she's definitely not the person who would like break down and cry when you talk about something life changing like that. She just shows up the whiteboard she's like, I should just be the spokesperson for this. Is- That's awesome. Yeah. So, so on, a, on an individual level, she is, you, you, as coaches, you're being able to see and guide her more on, on her goals and what she's after. Is that fair to say? Yes. Mm-hmm. It just aligns with people. I mean, we're not all 22 anymore. Why are we asking people to kill themselves? It just aligns with people's mindset. Like, I want to go to the gym and have a good time, and I want to feel really good. Right. And like, yeah, okay. And go come back, back tomorrow. Back. And yeah, it just never, it never aligned or people that really enjoy training. They want to do it every day. We always laugh because we live 20 seconds away from our gym and we'll drive by on Sundays. And the parking lot's full. Yeah. What are you guys doing here on Sunday? And they love it so much. And yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So right. it also it enhanced what we're good at on that question. I promise we'll move to the next one. But we've always had really high attendance in the gym. Always. When we had 80 members, 65 came a day. You know, something like that. Cool. Now that we're doubled in members, it's not like easy from a gym standpoint, but 100 plus people come through the gym every single day mm-hmm. and it's big that's, yeah that's awesome yeah um let's move on to this you know, well before i move on to this next one 
you just talked about your gym membership doubled. Is that just, that's kind of from when you originally opened or I know you guys have been adding members since you've started this. Can you, can you touch base on that a little bit? Do you feel like Ticker has some responsibility for that or is it just the time of the year? What do you think? Well, we did make a big move from Holly to Fenton. Mm -hmm. And our facility is just awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Uh, that did help. But I think more so when people come, like new people come to the gym and they have this conception of what high intensity training is. Yeah. And their friends are like, oh, I could never do that. Yeah. Now they're able to tell their friends like, no, you literally can do this and you should do this. Right. So I think, you know, them saying like, it's not what you think, just come in and try it. I think that's really helped because people walk in and they expect to see, you know, these top-notch athletes smashing themselves and they walk in, it's just normal people kind it's of other, just chilling. Other yeah. people like them. Yeah, and they can do it. So well, I, I think that's been really big. Yeah, the... Um, I didn't forget your question, but I had an answer, Max, so I don't even know how to rephrase the question, but you and I were talking about, like, you know, you have an endurance club, you have this or that or this, and we have CrossFit and we have a boot camp. Right. And the boot camp is finally just so people have a very consistent thing because people are afraid to do CrossFit, whereas that's... That's where he's going. Mm -hmm. That's stupid now because of what our type of training is, but I understand and totally. I understand, and everybody understands, you can see how it's getting pushed more from the competitive aspect to uh, the health side and getting people where we want them. And what's crazy now is, is that I think our gym membership, that's what it was, I think our gym membership went up because people were like, wait, you're going to burn body fat, you're going to gain muscle, you're not going to hurt yourself all the time, and you're going to be around a bunch of cool people every day, and you're going to be taught how to do new skills. Mm -hmm. Sign me up. Right. Yeah. We've been up, we've member Tom. He's been a member of the gym pretty much from the beginning. And his wife, Leanne, which she's awesome, she would never come to the gym. She's like, I can't do that shit. Right. <laughs> I, it's not for me. You guys are crazy. <laughs> and guess who signed up? Yeah. You know? That's a big deal. Yeah. We've got a yeah. lot of those too lately. Yeah, we've had a fair number of those as well at our at our place. So that's a big deal for to break that barrier and to break that wall down. That's, that is a really big deal in, we see that as well. So that's cool to hear. You know, I thought you were going to kind of pick up Andrew a little bit on, maybe, maybe you were, but. You didn't ask that question. Uh, you know, we, we were briefly talking about health or fitness as a commodity. You know, we were on the phone and, you know, uh, there's a difference between just offering some hit classes and offering some endurance classes and then offering health, you know, in a way, in a, in a way to find that, in a way to work towards that on a daily basis, right? You can take or leave a spin class. You can take or leave a CrossFit class. You can take or leave a HIT class. But your health, that's not something you just take or leave. It's you can ignore it for a while, but eventually it will catch up to you if you, if you ignore it. But it's not a commodity that you can just buy. You know, it's something that takes time and it's a culture and a, a lifestyle that I know for us as being powered by Ticker at, at Treetown, it just kind of, you know, our, our culture just kind of oozes that, hey, we're, we're interested in helping you live a longer, more robust, happier, less stressful life. It's a natural progression. So as much as, you know, programs need to progress to something bigger, we lose track of the fact that health also progresses on as time. Right. So as time goes on, your health is going to change. It's either going to progress in a negative way because you become more sedentary or it can com progress into something bigger and better and healthier. Great point. Um, oh. And you need to have programming that supports it. So progressive programming, not just throwing in like, oh, I'm going to add in something here, there, add to it to make myself better. You have to be smart about it or you're going to end up going the wrong way. Right. So for yeah. us, that's been big in having options. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody, to touch on that, everybody that you, everybody you talk about with that, Kate, is freaking 
everyone wants to live a healthier lifestyle until they're 80, whatever, and if you don't have any tangible goals on how to get there, you're just shooting darts blind in a room that the right. lights are off. Yeah, and what training does is it's like, okay, if I do 15 double unders, I am now not aerobic. And I know that that's a really hard line to look at it, but guess what? Maybe one day you'll be able to do 15 double unders and stay aerobic. And then guess what? You won't just lose that. Eventually you will do 20. Mm -hmm. And instead of going our health is our open score only or how I did the competition or something like that, I could do better in the open in 2000 and this year's a perfect example. Like, what if I don't do better in the open? Well, I that's on me mentally of how I'm going to feel, but am I healthier now? If I look at the blood pressure marker, if I look at the quality of life, my sleep, um, my overall energy, uh, I mean, I could go on and list, list, list. I actually would rank that I'm healthier. The only thing I haven't done is the blood test from then and the blood test from now. Right. So, I don't know, I mean. I would say you're way healthier. Yeah, right, I'm, I'm way healthier. And the coolest part, and this is, Oh, and sorry, but that's that's like the best um, thing Jen could have said just then. You know, a spouse to recognize that their other spouse is healthier. Like yeah. that's, I, I don't, we can take all the surveys, do all the blood tests we want, right. yeah. you, you know, but she recognizes there's a difference in you and in, in your energy level and in your satisfaction in life. Is that fair to say, Jen? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to the you know store without having to stop for snacks. Like, <laughs> 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 we're, we're on a twenty minute trip, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that to me, that that that's cool. Cool. Because yeah. he's not always eating food or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, your your score in the open, it will show if you're fitter, but it doesn't necessarily show if you're healthier. Yeah, it'll, it'll show if you're better at the open. Yeah. 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 For sure. The um, a, another big one with us is that we we have you know out of 170 some people, I make up a new number every day. I, I, just, I don't really know. Where I that, <laughs> so I, I'm not very organized. Uh, people, I would say that a lot of people have exercise addictions. I mean, yeah. I think that ticker training is the safest thing. It is. It, I don't want to use too many like drug references, but you know it is the the safest drug that you can do if you have an exercise addiction, because mm -hmm. if you're working out at your math, even near your math, like let's just be honest, even, right. even closer to what you were doing before, you can now work out for way longer. And her, and feel well, better. her best friend, who was a three-time regional, yeah. twice as an individual, I think 2015 was her last year, um, She's weaning off of an unhealthy exercise addiction, and I, she wouldn't be mad even if I shared that with however many people are going to see this. She can work out now a lot, and she can do a lot of work at a low heart rate. Yeah. And guess what? Go do more if you feel like it. Go do more. Just yeah. don't go do more dumb shit. Right. And we even say that when we teach level ones, like, don't do just more CrossFit. Your CrossFit workout, and and then you you gotta have. Some and balance to it. Plans or go home. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, I just think that it's so cool to me that when people come in now, I just got um, an Instagram message, hey, mind if I come in at 3.30 and do the aerobic row, the 5K for 30 minutes before the workout? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Go for it. Well, that's great. And you, I just, I, that's one of the funniest things that I see now when we program a 5K aerobic row. Those are the busiest days now. Yeah. You, you know, be, before it would be ghost town right yeah uh -huh. or when we end class early um and everyone goes and grabs a random piece of equipment just to yeah. hop on because they have 10 minutes they could get yeah, a 2k I've easy i've noticed that a ton yeah, yeah. On the row or before or after, that's awesome. yeah. i mean if you talk about a culture shift right and even just wanting to do that and understanding like i mean part of the part of the things that we hear are oh, I, I just want to get my workout in, or I didn't even break a sweat. <laughs> you know, those things, that's a mind shift, right? To understand that, hey, sitting on this rower or on this bike at my math is 
good training. Yeah. It is good for my health. That is a completely different mindset than I got to go throw myself around for 20 minutes or 15 or seven minutes and then flail around on the floor at the end. That just, so you guys notice that mind shift as well, you know, in, in just their. I think I mean, one of the biggest mindset shifts can be that you come in, you know, let's just say your mindset, you're going to earn something. So you come in and you do a seven minute workout and you earn what fitness long term. What does that mean? You know, you killed yourself for seven minutes, but you know, my athletes out there that did the wad today and then had 10 minutes to row, they understand that that 10 minutes on the row or the bike, that they're earning better health because of it. They're doing something just for their health, not to win or earn anything else. And yeah. that's huge because there's a huge difference between those things. Well said. That's awesome. Ah. Guys, I had, did, did we answer this? What has happened that you expected since starting Ticker? Oh. What I expected. Yeah, anything that you kind of expected? I, I got some. Okay. He, no, he, always, has, he always has something. No, I don't know. I don't know. You can, I'll give you an idea. You can probably go I expected some people to freak the fuck out. I did. I really did. Yeah. I was like, hey, you know, what's going on? Da, da, da. And then any gym owner who is following Tinker or interested, it's really easy for me to be like, hey, look, I said so, so do it. And then everybody's like, yeah. And then they say, well, oh, 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 I want to be fit. And I'm like, okay, I'm still going to be fitter. Than, like, this is the path for that. You yeah. just lay the hammer down and say, you know what? You're wrong. And, and it might not be easier for other gyms because of our credibility or whatever. So I don't want to just answer it like, like that. But I did see people freak out. So if people are watching, like, yes, there will be people very concerned because we train them to search for this pain, find it, absorb it, and then you'll try to repeat. And hopefully your pain tolerance goes up. Go. So thus, that makes you fitter. And then when you say that statement to yourself a million times over, <laughs> start to realize that it sounds very, very bad. Okay, if I hurt myself, then maybe the next time I hurt myself, it won't hurt as bad. And then maybe I'll hurt myself again. And then maybe the next time I hurt myself, it won't hurt as bad again. And I, I started saying that in my head, and I was like, shit. Yeah, but, but that's what we were doing. Well, we had an athlete that said that we threw in some random really hard workout and he goes, it just doesn't feel good to be there anymore. So I clearly need to do more of that so that it feels better to be there. And I asked him, did it ever feel good to be there? You know, it was this like blink, blink <laughs> stare, <laughs> but I was used to it. And that's what it is. It's building up a tolerance to pain. Yeah. What does that do for you in the end? Right. right. Well, and then, what was really going on with that person is they were going faster than they were before. So of course it's going to hurt. You know what I mean? Like all parameters show you're doing better, you're going faster, you're stronger, but it just doesn't feel as good anymore. Well, of course it doesn't. You're going a lot faster now. Because you can do a lot more work without yeah. having to go to the pain cave. Yeah. yeah. We had a guy come up and work out with us on Sunday, normal CrossFit guy. And he, before the workout, he's like, oh, I'm kind of nervous. And I was like, you don't need to be. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew and I are like laughing, doing, you know, our pull-ups and stuff. And he's like, oh, I'm like, you don't need to be nervous. We're not going to, we're not going to hurt ourselves right now. Right. It's really fun. Yeah, that's good. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, even just that guy coming in and expressing that he was nervous, he had already put himself into a stressful situation. Yeah. He had already done. He had already done enough stress that day just by getting ready to work out. Go home. You know, I mean, really, instead of just coming in and getting stronger and moving and building his aerobic system, right? He had already kind of gotten nervous, and yeah. which is was our common thing that we did before, right? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Anything happened that you didn't expect that that you were surprised by? Uh, I was surprised to see how packed our classes were. Ooh. Awesome. Yep. So just the, the amount of attendance in. Yeah. Before we'd be like, oh, 15 people show up. Like, cool. And now it's like 25, 35, you know, we're running out of equipment. 
Again. Again. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we just moved to get out of that, and then we're like, great. <laughs> now, we're into that. But yeah, I definitely didn't expect people to love it as much as they do. I, I, maybe they're pulling up. I don't know. But yeah, if they're showing up, they like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There was things I didn't expect was that all the people can came to tell me their their weight loss Mm -hmm. and not that I didn't know that would happen but normally our gym doesn't have a culture of using weight as a thing right and so they'd be like hey I'm down six pounds Gary Jarvis is watching he's like he's funny he I think I talked about Gary once on one of my lives because he's the guy's like yeah I guess I'm just doing the work down 11 pounds and I'm sleeping Great, and I, my life, I feel amazing. I, like, yeah, but, you know. Oh, nice. Fidel says, yeah. no, we really love it. Yeah. Fidel's another one. He, like, shrinks every time I see him. Yeah, I noticed when I was, when we came back for the second takeover, I noticed Fidel that yeah. that he he had, he had changed a little bit. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. He but, just wrote a 15K. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. Isn't that funny? Yeah, isn't yeah. that funny how you just... You know, for a while, 15 minutes, then all of a sudden it's 20, and then you're like sitting there for an hour. And you're just like. He also floor pressed like 285. Ah. Uh, so he's not. He's, he's not, not, not getting any weaker. No. no. Like, you can. I think he has a goal of rolling a marathon. I go, I bet you can dead the 500 and row a marathon in that day. Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. That'd be awesome. <laughs> and I have another question in here, guys, that I kind of sent. How are fitness and health related? And what do you guys see as a, the relationship between the two? A lead into that could be, do you have to be healthy to be fit? And do you have to be fit to be healthy? Kind of going one way. I think we see people that are extremely fit, but not as healthy as they could be. In terms of maybe their blood work because the amount of carbohydrates they're consuming to fuel their fitness. Um, even our, my best friend again, super fit, regional competitor, but not healthy because of, of a cancer situation. Luckily she's free, but same thing. So like my, my mindset of fitness as a snapshot of your health is kind of changing. Hmm. Uh, I don't, I don't know which direction. Yeah, because you could look at somebody with abs and biceps and and could run a mile in five minutes and say that person is really healthy. Meanwhile, yeah. meanwhile they sleep poorly. They're addicted to sugar. You know, know maybe so their skin's yellow. Like that, that's our gym, but I know so many people that eat shit and look amazing and are fit. They have a two thirty Fran. Right. And it's like. So my mindset has definitely shifted in the fact that this truly is a lifestyle and you can't you can't do that to your body and put your so much stress on your body and still be as healthy as you want to be. Maybe in your 25, 26, 27. You can get away with, you can get away with it. Yeah, you can get away with it technically, but so why would you want to do that? You with know? your community, when we were talking about weight loss not being something, I mean, I can't I mean we don't also look at like, Hey, it looks like you've lost 10 pounds. We had a guy walk in the gym the other day and I looked at him and I'm like, Craig, you look healthy. And it was the only adjective I could think of. He was glowing. His cheeks were pink. He was happy. He was like excited to come in and do the work. And if you really think of it that way, you know, members that come in dragging with big bags under their eyes or yellowed skin, you know, I'm not, no, I don't know if he lost weight or not, but he was like, he looked yeah. healthy. That's a great. There's no right, Kate, and then Max, that's it. It's like, how is health sexy? And I think us four with ticker training are, I mean, obviously the whole world doesn't know how deep we've gotten into this and the people we're talking to and whatever, but how do we make health sexy again? And it's Justin, you know, you guys have all met Justin. Like, he's just, like he says, he, people haven't realized it's cool. It's not cool yet. Or it's right. cool. You work out and do a lot of work at a low heart rate. Right. Like that's very cool. Right. If you want to assert your alpha dominance, do Fran with 95 pound thrusters and do it in four or five minutes and then do it again and then yeah. do it one more time. Yeah. Uh, or or do yeah. it or do it once at three minutes and walk away from it and just be like, yeah, that was cool. And just keep and then that that incline goes up. And that's what I'm looking at at health because 
if I were to tell you like pranayama breathing is a, a practice that people try to get in yoga, I watched a TED talk on it once and essentially like, you know, you can go next to a baby and, and start breathing with them deeply when they're crying and calm them down. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's all a breathing thing, but how do you teach yourself how to live that way? That's the, and that goes with like meditation and breathing and work like that, right? How do I get one second of pranayama breathing with meditation? I get one second. Mm -hmm. I, I work at it. How do I live 24 hours that way? Well, I have to train. And if I'm constantly doing things that are incorrect, then I'm not training. And I will never reach that sense of bliss. What's a fast way to get out of your head and to get into something that is psychedelic, if you will, would be to do drugs, right? I can take a pill and I can get there. I it can make myself breathe low or have a low heart rate. I can mm -hmm. take a drug to do that. I consider that that drug almost killing myself in a workout, right? Like, can that make you fit? And, and in terms, are you, are you gonna get results? Absolutely, and it's gonna happen quick. But what's the what's the side effects from that? Yeah. We're, at, we're training like we are. We're doing it naturally. We're training you to work to get that ultimate bliss of aerobic capacity, which is gonna be your health. Yeah, mm -hmm. I kind of heard, I uh, kind of, sorry, Andrew, I kind of heard you find fitness through health on that. Instead of the other way around, it's like fitness leads to health. It's like, no, first I'm gonna go through this path of being really healthy, yeah. and that leads to me just being fit. Just, right. it, it like accidentally mm -hmm. happens. Oh, look at me, I have abs. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you know? Oops. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Good. another question. That's so true, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true, Max, and it was backwards before. Yeah. Uh, hey, earn your, earn your sugar because you're fit. Earn your, you know, rest days because you killed yourself. Right. Why do we want to feel that way? No, we don't. The other one I had for you guys that, you know, we've talked a lot of awesome things with Ticker. What's, what's some of the, what are the hardships with it? What are some of the struggles that you've had with incorporating it to Abor? The hard things? Getting people to put their heart rate monitors on the screen. <laughs> Technology, I was like, I felt like a chip for that. Uh, yeah. The technology in the beginning was rough. Getting yep. everyone to pair their heart rate monitor, forget to sign in. That's just trivial stuff. It, now it's just smooth sailing. Yeah. That, that has really helped. Has, can I ask you guys, like, uh, do you feel it's challenged you to become better coaches? Oh, my God. I, we had a meeting with our coaches. We need to have more meetings. There are times this is a complete insult on myself. Not really, but <laughs> there are times okay. where I find that I'm running a class just to be very entertaining and inspirational, and, it, and um, that's it. And I guess educational, okay, let's say I'm doing all three of those things. It's in the warm up, it's in the skill development, but the second that I turn that clock on, shit does not matter one bit. Let's just be honest. This was, bef this was before, you mean? Yeah. I mean, this was before. And then now, what I'm doing is, I know we had to talk about making the workouts a little, not, not uh, I think right now you're tapering more towards getting kind of ready for the open, whatever. I'm making but, room for Thunder Bro, man. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest, it doesn't even, so I think people are even missing the 30, 40 minute. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. So maybe we even went too far because the I'm doing all my coaching now in the workout. Like I'm literally seeing on the, on the days we do 90 snatches or whatever, if you are sitting, if you miss a snatch as a coach, you just fucked your clients, right? You have no excuse. You have every, you have every reason to be watching one person do one snatch over 90 reps in a class of 20. You're going to get through everybody four times. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or days when we're just doing air squats oh. and people don't care to slow down or stop and look at you and understand exactly what you're trying to say. Correct. Mm -hmm. That has challenged me as a coach. No way, like I, in my mind, I think 
I don't want to waste any reps here. And there's days when it's like I'm at sit ups and box jumps. It's like, what can I really say? Sure. And we talked about that too. Those are the days we have to make fun with the music or absolutely. The rest time. And we're just trying to talk to people in the rest time. Yep. Just build that camaraderie. So it goes both ways of just interacting with our clients a little bit more. Mm-hmm. That's I awesome. get done with workouts and I always say, hey guys, look at the volume you did today. Look at the volume. Look at you just got over the course of the podcast. No podcast. Andrew's getting more and more. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's excited. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> the passion. The passion comes out, Jen. I'm gonna get really grumpy. You know that's funny. Um, the no, but you get done the workout. And you did 300 wall balls. 150 pull-ups. Dude. Do the math. Look, if you wanted to do 45 and 45 and feel really bad, hold your breath the whole time and do 45 and 45, and you'll feel really, really bad. But guess what? You'll feel like you just killed yourself and you didn't. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. In your head, you think you did. I, what about when you get done with 300 and 150 and you feel amazing? Look at all the work you just done. Your body's going to absorb that training. Yeah. And you're now successful. Yeah, I was a little sore from something this week, and I, I'm like, man, I must have, something must have been up. Like, my sleep's been off because of the new puppy, and, you know, I'm sore because of that. And now I just know it's not, I I really got something out of that workout. It's, I, I overdid it a little bit. Yeah. And I knew too high in my numbers, and I need to find a better rhythm for sleeping and recovery. Whereas before, it's, I'm just going to take a rest day. I just need it. And now it's what other lifestyle factor can I adjust to make me less sore? That's really good. And I've never had that before. Yeah. So I had a member today tell me that um, she watches her heart rate now all the time. Yeah. And she she watches her resting heart rate and she noticed that she'd been training a whole lot and she's relatively new to the gym. And she noticed her resting heart rate in sleep wasn't going down into the 50s anymore. And so she's like, although I find it really fun to come in here, I'm still struggling with some movements. I'm going to take a rest day. And she's like, lo and behold, last night, heart rate resting back down into the 50s. So she was back in today. But she's like, I want to come tomorrow. So I'm going to really do a good job of making sure I scale so I don't knock myself back out of that. That is awesome. Just to give your members the power to understand their bodies like that. Yeah. That's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's awesome. I was just I was just reading a text from um, somebody that's in the assessment period, and he and he says I just did the workout with 120 pistols. I can't. I honestly can't remember the last time I did one. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And uh, he was you know super surprised by this. He if he's still watching, he knows who he is. That is awesome. I think CrossFit people forget that even when they're moving slow. They are so much fitter on the sickness wellness fitness continuum. Right. Oh yeah. Any human in Walmart. Like or even or even any human in, in any type of fitness who doesn't know what they're doing. Sure. Sure, I would agree with that. You know, like like literally, um Well <laughs> even <laughs> e- <laughs> even through um through some of our metabolic testing when you really look at that and you recognize if you are a really high level crossfitter that is overstressed metabolically, there's some things that aren't so great compared to if you would just slow down a little bit. And we've seen that with a number of, of you guys as members already, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, that if had, you know, completely different metabolic analysis after just slowing down for a month, and they also are reporting less stif- stiffness, less soreness, shoulders, hips, knees, feeling better, right? So, I mean, this, this idea that slowing down is going to make me less fit, uh, hard to argue with being, doing 120 pistols when you haven't done one in how long? Right. And that's not more fit? Right. Yeah. You kind of talked about that too when we were talking about straining and recovery and the ability to absorb your training. Why smash yourself and then not be able to absorb that train 
that training session and they come back and they're like, well, I have to take another rest day. I have to take two rest days because I am literally so wrecked. Meanwhile, we're over here. We got three sessions in year one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're not taking any more days off, right? So training hours for the week, I just tripled you. Right. So, <laughs> so to recover from my training session, I have to sleep 19 hours, take four rest days. Get in some Normatec, get a massage. Right. Tape, Kinesio tape my shoulder, like feeling awesome. Put all these BCAs <laughs> or whatever they are in this chemical concoction with artificial flavors and colors and all these things, all yeah. in the name of fitness. Yep. You know, yeah. and... It's just not, you know, when you, <laughs> that's good, that's not right. Right. You know, and it's, it's just, you guys have spent some time on Dr. Maffetone's site, right? And you know, that, that kind of granola or hippie mentality with health, it just, it doesn't have to be this extreme thing. Everybody thinks it just has to be thoughtful. Like if you asked me, mm -hmm. Drinking a bunch of blue Gatorade is way more extreme than drinking water before I work out. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, wait, why is... We freaked out when we started eating a ton of fat. Right. Was, oh, my God. Yeah, that's a, that's a funny thing, right? Nobody cared when I was eating donuts and... No. You earned it. You know, but now it's like, well, you can't eat all that fat. That's the culture. Yeah. Snatched yourself, now you can go get some donuts. Right. Like, where's your carbs? Like, yeah. well, that's just well, one. Yeah. <laughs> What's, everybody wants to look good. Fair. For some reason, we've developed in CrossFit that if you have a four, I'm just talking with guys. I mean, you can give me the ladies. If you have a 455 pound back squat, I, you're, you, you you're awesome, right? That actually doesn't give you any credibility in anything. Now, as a man, what do you think that makes you do? All right, if I have a 455 pound back squat, I, I can kick your ass. That's untrue. <laughs> <laughs> got plenty of guys who are 112 pounds that can kick my ass. Um, I've been to it, it's amazing. And so, that, okay, that facts out, that means nothing. All right, if I can back squat 455 pounds, I'm lean. I can show you a lot of guys who can back squat 455 pounds who are not lean. And, you know, it has, has to breathe excessively just to walk to the squat rack. If I can squat 455 pounds, I'm going to the games. Very incorrect again. There's a guy who he um, has a book called The Hybrid Athlete. He runs really competitive marathons. And he also can back squat, I think, 700. And he's, he's not good at CrossFit. He even says that. He's like, I'm not good at CrossFit. I'm not going to compete in CrossFit. So what, you want to look good. You're going to look better probably doing accessory work and training aerobically and being healthier. Healthy, yeah. happy. Well, and that's the other thing I, I feel like with this programming and with these other markers to be able to see your progress – you know, I used to say, oh, I, you know, we don't want to talk about weight or body fat or really anything other than performance, right? And I always would kind of like, listen, if you can jump onto a box that you couldn't jump onto before, you know, you're, you're doing good and you're making progress. And, and some of that, yes, is true to a point. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you start overreaching constantly and all of a sudden you potentially, you know, are kind of getting close to your maximum human potential. Now, the trajectory is going to be really slow, right? And that's okay. But when you are all of a sudden, or the only culture is like, listen, if I don't PR my back squat today, all this has been for waste. Yeah. Right? And, you know, that can be one very discouraging for, for an athlete or a member. And now, granted, if their goal was to back squat 350 pounds and they made that very clear with, you know, and you don't help them. Well, that that's on you. But if you said that's totally possible, but let, you know, you're at 240 pounds, that's going to take three years. Cool. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Awesome. Well, that's a lot different than I want to do this in six months. Mm -hmm. Now we're, you know, now we're only measuring happiness or measuring re progress on a very narrow thought pattern 
right? And with ticker, there's just, hey, I didn't back squat 350 pounds, but man, I feel really good all the time. Yeah. Maybe I'll get it next time. Cool. Right. It, I'm sure, Max, you've gone through this with competing and rehab for sure. Up until even a couple years ago, your worth as a, an athlete is your score in the open. You mm, place in the mm -hmm. open. Right. Kind of that same thing. And I have completely let go of that. He's still struggling with it a little bit. Of yeah. The fitness, like, whatever I place in the open, that's my, that's my worth as an athlete. And it just doesn't make sense. And that's why I'm so happy that we're kind of getting away from that. And... It doesn't matter. You should have fun. You should. The open is a great time to just have fun with your friends, challenge yourself a little bit, maybe do something that you haven't done before, mm -hmm. right? Look around and encourage everybody else in your gym, mm -hmm. right? That that is trying something new, and and kind of get out of your own out of your own way a little bit, in my opinion. So I it, talked to two of our athletes yesterday about the open and how we're going to do it because it's coming up. And one of them is injured, um, something he did outside the gym. And he's like, can I still come and, like, help and, <laughs> and judge people and, like, hang out and watch? He's like, I want to be part of the community part of it. And you can't do any of the workouts. And we had another woman who's a really hard charger. And I asked her how she's feeling going into Friday. And she's like, I'm so excited. You know, I can't wait for the, the energy of doing those workouts and seeing where I'm at. You know, she placed really well last year in her, you know, narrow division of humans. And she's like, a couple skills that I wish I would have really worked on more. But I feel so good that it's not going to bother me. And, you know, maybe they won't come in, in in the workouts. Or maybe it's not a big deal and I'll still do really well. Right. So valuing worth, she'd be one that's like, I'm going to do better this year and I'm going to win. Now she's like, I feel great. Let's see where I compare. And then we're going to come on Saturday and do the regular workout kind and, of thing. And long term, everybody's going to get better. I'm, yeah. I'm absolutely 100% sure of that. Like, if you continue to train like this, eventually, if you are dedicated and you decide to make that something that you wish to do, you will continue to progress. It's because it's a volume. It's just a matter of like, where is your <laughs> mindset at and what is, what is important to you? And if your open score is important to you, then, well, maybe we better make sure we're doing a whole bunch of stuff that's going to make sure you have a really good open. And then guess what? It might not even show up. Right. <laughs> or like, right. everything might change. And guess what? Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. Jen hit it on the head. I even think Gina was a regional. Mm -hmm. yep. like Gina's commenting, you know, Jen nails it on the head, and yeah, she she is cool with it. I'm I'm still not cool with it because it's still so fresh, right? And it makes me angry that I'm I'm still labeling myself as a number. So if people are struggling with that, I do I do understand. Sure. Um, and I, I I can empathize, but just remember that. We, we created this culture of CrossFit, and I think it was a few years ago. It's very obvious that women are way more ruthless with men when it comes to competing. Like, women compete way harder than men do, in my opinion, in this sport. Um, and I remember seeing, I can't remember the CrossFit Games athlete, Lindsay Valenzuela, maybe. I saw on, a, on her social media, like, she had a baby, and she was talking about just kind of working out and being happy. And why, you know, her scores weren't saying but it was okay and some people were commenting like you're just like not training hard and trying to still claim that you reap the benefits of hard training like you're just you're just not putting in the work and i saw that and i was like what the fuck is going on and that still goes on to this day mm -hmm. to this day that goes on where i feel like i have to represent because if i let one male beat me in a workout i i get very mad and in my head i'm like why why? But I, it, it's still there. It's still there. Sure. I still get it. Um, but you're too old for that shit. You're 30. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm 30 <laughs> years old. Like at some point, I'm going to be 31. At some point. And also, and also, I mean, a perfect example of health is like one of our members, Craig. He's this he's awesome ticker training guy. Has every shirt you guys have. <laughs> he showed us a picture today of his dad 
at 53? 55. 55, and him at 53. Craig is one of the most jacked 53 year olds you'll ever see. I think he's 52. And he, he, no, he's 53. I agree. And he showed us a picture of his dad holding his grandkids at 55. And he's like, this is what working in the shop, stress, giving up your life, like not, I mean, they didn't know working out like we did, but they look like two different humans. Yeah. He did all his aging from 20 to 55. He looks the same now from 55 to 75 or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And Craig looks like a, he could go to a bodybuilding show tomorrow. So what do I actually want? Do I want this open or do I want that? I want that. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, no one Yeah, that that kind of was a great you know, it's similar to what Vaughn said in our interview with him, right? You know, like he just wants this long trajectory to just, you know, health and continue to do this and you know, we all want to be, you know, Greg. <laughs> you yeah. know, and you know, uh, my wife said something to me the other day. She's like, you know, you are going to age. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course. I, I was like, I don't think I'm beyond that. But I, I don't foresee with the way I'm training now, not being able to do things that I want, even at 80 years old. I, mm -hmm. I, if I continue to move with range of motion and, and, and keep eating well and taking care of myself, why would that end? Why, why would that end? Do you know what I mean? Maybe an injury or something like that where I overdo it or I crash on my bike or get in a car accident. Like I get all of that stuff happens. Yeah. But if you continue to move, why should you not continue to move? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and she's like, well, just the natural aging process. Well, of course. Right. There's yeah. some of that. Maybe I'll have to slow down and maybe my air squats won't look quite as beautiful as they do now. But, you know, it's just kind of like we're setting and I feel for me, what would have kept me from doing that was a broken aerobic system. The inflammation that I had prior to this, because you can see my scores in, in sugar wad. I'm very pedestrian at this stuff. And Jen, I think you kind of can feel me on that. Yes. Where still, if you flip the switch, you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. But no, no, 175 in that complex is pretty unpedestrian. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't feel pedestrian either, let me tell you. It felt horrible. Oh, yeah. The thrusters the other day, I'm like, oh, I get to use 65 pounds. Like, I have a sub three minute cram, yet I'm excited now to use 65 pounds in a workout yeah. because I've built the capacity to stay aerobic using that weight. Right. Or today I did. 35 pound kettlebell for the first time not a heavy kettlebell no but i now built up the capacity to stay in my math ranges and use that heavier kettlebell yeah and on a and on a daily basis just you feel the difference in your muscles and in your tendons and your shoulders yes is that fair to say yeah. especially especially andrew yeah that's definitely more me answer like this is, this is sad too, but like, you know, just to help around the house and like put stuff away. No, I get that. Or, or um, you know, at night, be like, hey, can you grab me a glass for wine or something like that? Like, she didn't know how, how it's not that I was being lazy. She's like, no. Or like, just. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, no, when I finally get comfortable, like, that's the first time that I've been comfortable all. Day. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I can't, I can't express to you how how hard. Yeah. Well, how because I'm less inflamed. Like it hurt. It physically will hurt me to stand back up to go get you a glass of wine. That's why I'm huffing. It, it it's yeah. physically gonna it's hurt me. Yeah. Huffing. He wasn't annoyed by you, Jen. <laughs> I have to keep <laughs> telling that. And, and like for little things like putting away the toaster, you know, to to bend <laughs> over or just things like that. And, to, to squat in the bottom of a squat, not warmed up, like doing daily activities. Crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. But yet you can do your Fran in 230 yeah. or better, I probably. Not, and it's not, I'm not done. Like this isn't cured yet. But I mean, I've, I've sat for an hour. We've been doing this for an hour. That's, that's a huge plus. Um, sleeping's never been better. That's a huge plus. Like being just a nicer husband and 
like today I, I did, I, I, made, I made our boot camp do the ticker training workout. So four, four ladies, 50s, they're all 50s, 50s, low 50s. That was my training group today. Four ladies that were 50 plus, um, they used, you know, 12 pound kettlebells, threw up an eight pound wall ball, and we had a great fucking time. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Lifting, I had to do a bicep finisher, and we just blasted it, and it was awesome. And that is so different than I was at the Granite Games less than a year ago. Yeah. So, able to put my training with them and work on their health as a system um, it is absolutely fantastic. Looks like we got a question. Mm. So, do you guys program strength? This is for you, Max. I'll read it to you. So, do you guys program strength only powerlifting lifts still throughout the week? I'm imagining not on a daily basis, but when it comes an athlete member watching to build strength, do you do it? Oh shit. In class. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Corey, that answer is absolutely yes. Um, our members are doing more strength training because they're left in less inflamed because of building that aerobic system. That's in my opinion, mm -hmm. and Max programs that all the time. They have most of our lifting Corey is done at the end of class. So they'll do whatever, 20, 30, 40 minute workout, and then they have the energy to get their lifts in. So this week we did presses, front squats, clean grip deadlifts. Mm -hmm. RDLs. RDL, oh yeah, RDLs. Yeah, I, I wondered if you guys were still putting the strength second. We've started to go back the other way again where we put our strength before we were, I, we were starting to see people sneak out on us, right? Yeah. And I, I find that strength to be so important for people that I want. If, if you were to kind of hold me down and tell me which one's more important, it'd be, it'd be tough for me to not say making my athletes stronger is more important than more aerobic maybe. Well, if they don't do the strength, then they don't have the strength to make it through the workout. Correct. The easier time you... Yeah, the easier time you have yourself to move around. With a 14-pound weight. Right. I love, I, I ran it. You know, I'm, I, I have different concepts of strength. And I absolutely hate barbell strength. If I'm just being honest with you, I, I hate it. It's hard. I don't, it's well, that's, hard. Your, that's your fault for being so strong, Andrew. Yeah, I hate it. And I'm always, <laughs> no, well, I know. It's like, I like doing things like seeing them move a heavy sandbag as, as their strength. Or seeing them do... Oh the unbroken kettlebell swings at 124 pounds is their strength after. But like we have those pieces of equipment not everybody else does. Or, you know, sled poles or something like that. And everybody's like, strength, I gotta do my Oli, I gotta do my power lifting. Like, uh, yeah, you, you do, but geez, just, why don't you lift at a tempo? You know, like I love when you throw in the tempo lifts because then it takes people's mind. I actually give people Hey, if you don't feel like lifting heavy, lift, lift, lift tempo. tempo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that is a coach. You can always see that with people. If you can just kind of see they're tired from the day yeah. or they put the bar on their back and you can just see they're not able to, you know, get themselves in a good position. You just say, hey, let's just tempo this stuff and, and it'll be plenty hard. We should probably do it first. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. We, we played with it both ways. I just didn't. I was afraid people were going to start, you know, they, oh, I got to get going. I got to get going. And we do see that a little we do bit. See that. We mm -hmm. what, where we're going with this, that, and we talked about this, but, you know, not every day, but the majority of the days, five days a week, we have some type of strength, right? Either a press, a deadlift, back squat, front squat. Um, we'll start adding some more Oli stuff into that as well, where you spend 15, 20 minutes just working on clean and jerk snatch. Mm -hmm. um, but then we have our mat training, our metabolic aerobic threshold training, which is, you know, our, our general type programming, of course, 5%, 10% of the time, we're going to do some muscle endurance and some, you know, lactate work skills, skills. And then, you know, where we're going with this, where I think is going to be a ton of value is when we start doing these finishers from your Thunder Bro stuff, Andrew. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, because there's, there's days where mat training is just kind of like boring. You know, like some of those 12 minute ons, five minutes off, 12 minutes on, you kind of get into this little bit of doldrum. And 
if you're not in the flow state, right, that we've talked about. So it'll be kind of a fun way to bring everybody together at the end and, yeah. you know, get a little pump and bring your community goofing around. And mm-hmm. I'm, I really think that's going to add a lot of value to ticker for gyms and then for individuals as well. I just mm-hmm. think it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to be super fun. So oh, we have hmm. wondering about consistent retention on those aerobic days. I may have missed that earlier. I program recovery days often and see a huge fall off. Much of this consists around steady aerobic work of this fashion like taker without the monitoring, obviously feedback. That's our entire program. Travis. Yeah. Our the entire <laughs> program, Travis is like, I would, I agree with you. I bet if you just programmed like a active rest day or a recovery day or something like that, you would see a, people will take that as a, I'm just going to take that day off day because Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get anything done because the culture is, if I'm not hurting, I'm not getting results or I'm not getting work done. So we'll actually see that 30 minute row day. We we said that earlier, one of them, or Max did about one of his most packed classes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think the question Travis would be more to change your culture around like how, how can you gain benefit from that steady aerobic work in your classes? Yes, people need that. I think ours is flipped where 90% of our work is steady aerobic work and then 10% is that lactate threshold type stuff where they're hurting as they would in a regular CrossFit workout. So typical CrossFit programming is 90% lactate threshold and 10% maybe not even. Yeah. Yeah. That's a rest day. 10 per, the other 10% is rest days. Yeah. Well then yeah. if I think about the GOAT program, so we have goal oriented aerobic training, which is endurance and it's still CrossFit movements, but it's for those longer efforts. That's our fastest growing program at the gym. Like we're mm-hmm. out of space right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, because people recognize the, the benefits of it. You know, and it's not necessarily, you know, like a, a long recovery effort, but you're still moving for 45 minutes. You're not doing a strength component and a wad component. Well, so to answer in that question, that those are over full, actually. I wish, yeah. I, wish I did more of that work. I, I really do. Well, it's like, it's, it's kind of specific to your guys' gym, the GOAT, because it'd almost be like you'd have to teach people how to develop their own GOAT program inside of their own gym. Yeah. You know, they don't have this amount of this or that. Or like, right. Or about days where their class is using the rowers and, the, and their, their, but guess what? You can do a go workout with no, with no, uh, bike or rower. Yeah. You might get creative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not step up on a plate? Do plate step ups. And, and to, right. to kind of pick up on his questions regarding, you know, active recovery days, mm-hmm. when you get really good at ticker and, or aerobic training, like, you have to back off your math, right? Andrew, like if you don't want to push yourself, you can't get near your math is my guess most days. Like if you just were like, I just want to chill out today, you don't get to train at your math. Is that a fair assumption? It works for me. There are days that I come in at the, you know, I don't need active recovery, but there are days that I come in and maybe I've, it's, you know. Like for Kate to work at her math, it's hard work for her. It's really hard work. That's my intensity. So there are many days that I don't even come close. What's that? You said she doesn't, she doesn't like working that near her because her math is so high. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, Kate, do a 5K to her match. She's like, no. Yeah. I did today, <laughs> right? We did a whole entire workout today, which was wall balls and double unders and kettlebell swings. I did not hit my math until the eighth set. So for fun, I decided to do four rounds without rest to see, you know, what does it feel I like when rest. I hold pace just above my math? I didn't like it. Now, that workout was really hard for other people in the opposite way. Right. You know, for me, today may have been active recovery then, and I was doing that workout because I had a hard time getting up to that level. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. If I'm going to stay above, if I'm going to, like, not go below 120, like, if I'm going to average above 120 for a long period of time, that's a lot of work. Right. Right. Every time we do take her, like, I'll spike to, you know, maybe where I'm, what, close to 140s very quickly, but I will come right back down, you know, 106, 108, like something like that, where I don't want to, I don't want to hang out at 140. Right. I, I did the open workout. I think I have it on my phone, the 13-1, and I did it at almost, almost, I got the same score I did in 2013, 
I didn't do burpees to a target. I don't think that would have mattered that much though. And I mean, the workout, I, yeah, let's say I averaged a 124. That's insane. Wow. Well, that ain't it. Um, Corey, no, we don't use heart rate stuff for our strength. Yeah. Or for your boot camp, is that what you asked? Yeah, if we use stuff that for our boot camp, no. That's just 30 minute. Yeah. But yeah, basically, there's uh, that just sounds terrible to keep my heart rate super high for like 20 minutes, like, like 12 minutes where you're sp spiking 10, 15 beats above where the end range of my fat burning is and then you kind of come back down but then you kind of go back up and you go oh. it's okay to test right but on a daily basis it's a great test yeah, yeah. well you guys you probably got to get going i think somebody's got a coach i would think i have to go meet a new member <laughs> well, you guys thanks for taking the time to do this i really appreciate it i hope we can do this more often and you can guys can share some of what you're seeing and you know um you guys have said this before, but you're open and willing to talk to other gym owners that might be nervous about doing this or, you know, and you can share some of your experiences. Is that, is that cool? They should reach out to you. Is that fair? Absolutely. Cool. Well, thanks, you guys. This is awesome. Thanks for spending so much time. You guys can share it. Yeah. Sounds great. See you later. Right. Bye.